In this video, we will look at how we can find the range of a composite function. We will use the example of these two functions, function f and function g, in this video. Here, we are required to find the range of the composite function gf. As with the nodes, there are two methods to be used to find the range of a composite function. For method a, we can see the composite function as one single machine that will act on value that comes from the domain of gf which we know is the same as the domain of f, which is any value that is less than or equals to 1. So, there are a few examples of values that can be found in this domain, such as 1, 0, negative 1, and so on. Then, let us look at an example of feeding one value from this domain into our machine. Let's say we take 0, put it into our machine of gf, gf works on this value, and come up with an output, in this case, which is 2. This output will form a set of values that is being known as the range of gf. Similarly, if we input the value of negative 1 into our machine, it will work on this value and come up with an output, in this case 3.64. Again, this value will form part of the set of values known as the range of gf. This will follow for the same as the other values that we have given as examples from the domain of gf. So, how does this work mathematically? Step 1. We find the rule and domain of the composite function gf first, as shown on the screen. Next, we draw the graph of gf within the domain that we have found. You can use your GC to help you to sketch this graph. From the graph, we can easily see what is the range of this composite function, in this case, which is going from 0 to 4. There are a few pros and cons of using method A, as shown on the screen. You can spend some time to read through these pros and cons. Next, we will move on to method B. In this method, we will still start off with the set of values, which is the domain of gf, that is the same as the domain of f. But instead of looking at the composite function as one single machine, now we will see it as a machine that consists of two separate components. The first component will be the first function that will act on the values, which is the function f, and the second component will be is the second function that will act, and that will be the function g. So in this case, first we will take a value from the domain of gf, let's say 0, and this will go into the machine, the component of the machine function f first, which will come up with an output in this case, which is 0. This output will go into the set of values known as the range of f. Then, this value from the range of f is being fed into the second component of the machine, which is function g. This function g will act on this value and come up with an output, which is 2 in this case. This output will form the set of values, which is known as the range of gf. Next, let us look at the example of using the value negative 1 from the domain of gf. If we fit negative 1 into the function f, it will work on this value, come up with output, and this output will form part of the range of f. Then, the function g will take in this value from the range of f, works on it, and have an output. This output will form the set of values known as the range of gf. This will work the same way for the rest of the values given as example in the, range of, in the domain of gf. As you can see, these values are exactly the same as those that we have found in method A. How do we do this mathematically? First, we find the range of the function f. This corresponds to the first component of the machine as we have seen earlier. To find the range of function f, we will draw out the graph of y equals to fx. We can use our GC to help us to do that. And from the graph, we can easily see that the range of f is from negative 1 to e minus 1. Next, we will find the range of the function g, but instead of using its own domain, we will use the range of f as its new domain. This corresponds to the second component in our machine. As you can see in this diagram, g doesn't act on its own domain anymore, but instead g acts on values that is taken from the range of function f. As you can see on the graph that has been drawn using the GC, we have the graph of y equals to gx that does not go for the whole domain of g. Instead, it only goes from 
negative 1 to e minus 1, which is our range of f. Drawing this out, we can see the range of g. This range of the function g under its new domain is the range of our composite function gf, which is going from 0 to 4, the same as we have found in method a. There are a few pros and cons of using method b as well. Now, let's look at a summary of both method A and method B on the same page.